We'd like to say good morning to everyone and welcome to St. John's East United Church of Christ. We are located at 7000 Lincoln Avenue. We are directly across the street from Plaza Park School. We are not only welcoming those of you that are worshiping live with us today, but uh, those of you that may be joining us live stream, whether you are local here in Evansville, as far away as my Aunt Betty uh, in Texas, uh, Bill and Karen Jackson right here in Evansville. We are just glad to have you fellowshipping with us here today. Uh, the Bible reminds us uh, in the word of God that I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. This is certainly a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, certainly one statement I like to make every, uh, every Sunday morning without any sense of contradiction and that is God is good. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Good morning. Just a few reminders. Um, I know you can read this in the bulletin, but I think it's always good to hear somebody say it on Sunday mornings to uh, get our memory going. But we've got a couple events coming up in the near future. One of them, the next event in October, is going to be our last and final. Uh, family food truck night and so that time is going to be from 4 30 to 6 30 starting at the same time as we did last time it'll end at 6 30 we've shortened it a little bit because it starts to get dark in October and so that's the game plan we'll have some new food trucks out there as always it's a great time out there good fellowship so put that on your schedule and then I came in today and I saw whoa somebody went to the grocery store and got a lot of candy so we are we have a good start going out there but um i'm here to tell you we need about 10 times more than what's out there so put that on your list when you go to the grocery store if you are not going to uh, be able to participate in the trunk trunk or treat we still like for you to bring candy so that we have the extra to pass out because trust me we are going to need it so Candy, 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 put that on your grocery list. Okay, thank you. Brother Henry, would you join me in a word of prayer? God, we thank you for this, another expression of your love, grace, and mercy. 
those of us that are honest with ourselves realize it was not a rooster nor was it an alarm clock that woke us up this morning, but it was your finger of love, it was your grace and mercy that allowed us, God, to wake up and to see and experience another day. We woke up, Lord, and we realized that um, you have blessed us all week long. And so we decided to come to the house of prayer to give your name praise, honor, and glory, to fellowship with like-minded believers, to hear the preached word of God. And simply, God, to express our gratitude and our appreciation, realizing that every good and perfect gift comes from you. We pray, God, for every individual, every family, even every visitor or church that is represented here this morning. We stand before you this morning realizing, God, that we are not deserving of all of your blessings. But even in spite of us, God, you decided to bless us anyway, and so we came to tell you thank you. Now, God, we uh, pray a special blessing on those that had a desire to be at church today and one reason or another could not be here. We certainly pray for those individuals that are joining us via live stream. One of the beauties of Christianity and a relationship with God is that he is omnipresent. He is literally everywhere at the same time. And even as he is present, he is also able to bless wherever his Holy Spirit abides. We ask now, God, that you be an integral part of this service today uh, as we continue to give your name praise, honor, and glory, for indeed thou art worthy. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Welcome, all children of God, to this place of love and grace. God invites all of us to be a part of his beloved community. We are welcome just as we are. We are loved just as we are. want to take a moment, reiterate a couple of announcements. Thank you, Gwen, for uh, letting us know uh, what's upcoming in the month of October. Um, you've probably already seen it in your bulletin, but we would certainly like to welcome uh, each of you that are with us today on what is considered National Back to Church Sunday. Uh, so appreciate your presence here today. Uh, we did have a great time Tuesday evening at our second 
family food and truck night. We want to thank uh, everyone that volunteered, set up, participated, and then uh, clean up afterwards. Um, also wanted to, uh, in reference to our neighbors across the street, Plaza Park, they are still looking for tutors, especially in the arena of math, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 2.30 to 4.30. If that's something you would be interested in, we would certainly appreciate your participation. Uh, I attended this week um, the first monthly site council meeting at Plaza Park. Got to interact and dialogue with uh, several other groups and organizations in the community, as well as share uh, with Plaza and uh, those community partners what we are doing here at St. John's. And so um, promoting our community uh, classroom, promoting our Bible study, and of course, promoting Sunday, mor uh, Sunday morning worship. Uh, I also started uh, this Monday uh, a chess class, um, chess club, if you will, also at Plaza. That'll be every Monday from 3 to 4.30. We had a group of eight kids. It was a great time and uh, looking forward to more fellowship with them. Uh, also had the opportunity earlier this week at the, uh, or this past week, excuse me, at the African American Museum. They uh, had a welcome reception for uh, David Raglan. He is the uh, new coach at the University of Evansville. Uh, looking forward to uh, great things with U of E this year. Also, uh, Pastor Ryan Jackson, new pastor at New Hope, was there. So uh, just welcoming um, individuals uh, that are doing positive things in our community. Uh, our Bible study does continue um, each and every Wednesday, live 12 noon, 6 p.m. via Zoom. We would certainly prayerfully ask you to uh, be a part uh, of our study time as we continue the series, Confessing the Word. Uh, we uh, got halfway through the 23rd Division of Psalms. We are actually breaking that Psalms down uh, uh, specifically and categorically by verse. I think you'll get uh, some really good things out of that. I want to thank my uh, friend and frequent visitor, Mother Jean Brown, who brought us uh, a beautiful handout uh, that enabled us to dig deeper into that particular study. Um, so we would certainly encourage you to be with us. You probably noticed uh, in your bulletin also this morning that I will be a part of a panel uh, discussion this Tuesday, 6 p.m. at New Hope Baptist Church. Uh, dealing with uh, issues of mental health. Um, it's, um, it's an ongoing challenge. Um, it is uh, particularly an issue in the African American community, uh, but all of us from time to time uh, need some help. Uh, we need some direction, we need uh, some guidance. Uh, one of the challenges I know that I've seen personally in our community is the fact we will come to church and we will pray to God, uh, we will worship, we will study the word, we will pray, uh, but sometimes we need a little additional help. And so we're gonna be talking about some of those challenges as well as uh, what some of those uh, solutions will be. So if you're available uh, this Tuesday at uh, six, uh, please join us there at New Hope uh, Missionary Baptist Church. On our uh, prayer list uh, this morning, um, we want to list or, or name uh, Shane Sable, who is continuing going through chemo and uh, other uh, health issues. Susan Lindsay, who is with us today, glad to see her and Frank. Uh, Pastor Mike Claypool of Living Word Church, he is home after surgery last week. Vanessa Brown, Colette Smith, Tonda Pauly, Kevin Pearson, uh, she was with us Wednesday at 12 noon, Leslie Carthen. Let's keep her, her on our prayer list. We're praying for our member and elder, uh, Deborah Wilson, uh, as she is enjoying some vacation time. Uh, she headed out to New York City earlier, and then uh, she'll be hitting Nashville, Tennessee. So uh, we, miss, we miss her smiling face here this morning, but we know she's having a great time. Uh, we certainly would be remiss if we did not welcome back our uh, friend, brother, and uh, double dipper Bible study student Nelson Johnson, who was in Bible camp this past week, Tuesday through Saturday. We missed him uh, Wednesday at noon at six, but uh, talked with him this morning. He had a great time in his uh, Bible study camp, and I'm sure he will have uh, plenty of ins inspiration and information to share with us uh, in the uh, upcoming weeks. 
um, a number of bereaved families that we are continuing to pray for this morning, uh, in particular the family of Mother Lucille Watson, who was funeralized yesterday at uh, Liberty Baptist Church. Mother Watson, 92 years young, lived a full life, was a blessing both to her family, her church, and her community. So uh, we're certainly praying for our friend Rosemary and that entire family. Um, certainly want to give a shout out to Pastor Todd Robertson, who gave uh, just a phenomenal eulogy. I told him after service, I'm going to wait a few weeks, uh, but I'm still in that uh, sermon title that he used yesterday, Help for Today and Hope for Tomorrow. So when y'all hear it, act like you hadn't heard that title before. Uh, it was dynamic, and I was certainly uplifted, uh, edified, and, ins and inspired. Uh, we certainly, on National Back to Church Sunday, like to welcome all of our visiting friends, uh, Mother Glenda McKinney. Pat, you need to talk to Sister McKinney after service. She has a pair of shade glasses I think would look real good on you. Uh, so uh, check with her. Uh, kind of got that Holly, kind of got that Hollywood look. Um, some of our regulars, uh, Mother Jean Brown, her son, uh, Terry, uh, Terry Sutton. We're certainly glad to have Pat's longtime friend, Vita Crow. Uh, but Vita came in uh, with her grandson, Elijah, his girlfriend, Haley. Uh, haven't seen uh, Elijah in a while. So, man, fantastic to have you here. Longtime friend, Claudia Matthews, Daphne, she's, she's a regular. So uh, you guys uh, are always an encouragement, and we certainly continue to solicit, solicit your prayers. Um, one other prayer request, uh, thanks to some of St. John's East Angels who have made our grounds look beautiful. Uh, we talk from time to time about people that work both in front of and behind the scenes, and uh, I'm sure whoever put that announcement there is certainly very aware of that. Are there any others before we pray collaboratively uh, as a congregation? Uh, are there any other prayer requests or praise reports that anyone would like to share this morning? Anyone at all? Okay. What family? Thank you. Thank you, Christy, because I did forget that um, longtime friend, uh, tennis partner of mine, Daryl McKellen, uh, passed away earlier this week. Uh, we have not received. Um, dates as far as arrangements. Uh, I put a post on uh, Facebook a couple of days ago, 21 years ago at the Labor Day tournament at uh, Wesselman's Park. Um, Claudia's sister, Sandra Matthews, uh, now retired, uh, editor of Our Times, came out to Wesselman's, took a picture of Daryl and I. He won the A division, I won the, the B division. I saw Daryl approximately a year ago uh, at another funeral service at Memorial, and he announced at that time um, that two weeks prior he had been diagnosed with cancer. Um, I did not realize uh, that that situation had escalated, so it was certainly a shock uh, to hear that uh, he had went home to be with the Lord. Uh, but Durrell was not only a, a phenomenal athlete, a personal trainer, great tennis player, um, he, he was a uh, he was a child of God, uh, a deacon at Nazarene Baptist Church, sung in the choir, worked with the men's ministry, and he was just a blessing uh, to so many uh, individuals. When you see a situation like that, one of the things that reminds all of us is uh, how fragile uh, life can be, uh, how 21 years ago we were running up and down and across the tennis court, and, and Durrell, by the way, was one of the top tennis players uh, at the upper echelon where I'm kind of more of a recreational type player. This is the type of guy that was winning tournaments left, right, and sideways. But it reminds me, um, you can take all of your vitamins, lift weights, eat right, do all the things physically that we are supposed to do, but there is no guarantee how much time that we have left. It behooves us, and I'm already getting into my message for the morning, uh, to be in right relationship with the Lord, and we are certainly uh, grateful that Daryl was. We pray for his family, especially his daughter, Kayla. Thank you, Christy, for that reminder. Anyone else? All right. Jesus taught his disciples to pray in this particular manner, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. that a little longer. Kings and kingdoms will pass away, but there is something about that name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Again, welcome uh, each and every one of you live, live stream. Thanks so much for coming out. I see my friend uh, John Paulson is here today. I hadn't seen him in a while. Great to see his uh, smiling face. And Pat, even though she's working that tough schedule, our friend and sister Kitsy is with us here this morning. So, uh, man, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm uplifted. I'm encouraged today to see all of these smiling faces. On a personal note for uh, my friend and my agent, Gwen Lewis, uh, it is true the Chicago Bears did uh, defeat the San Francisco uh, 49ers. <clears throat> uh, yes, in a stunning upset at home at Soldier Field. And uh, so we've been celebrating uh, all week. We do have our hands full tonight in Lambeau Field where we will go up against our number one nemesis, Aaron Rodgers. Um, but uh, my bears, they're, they're, they're looking good, so y'all pray for us. 7.20 Central Standard Time, the bears in Lambeau Field. <clears throat> put that on your prayer list. As, as we do each and every Sunday, put your hand on your word, uh, whether it's your physical Bible, your electronic device. Repeat after me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am, and I can do what it says I can do. I am a believer, not a doubter. And my life is the better after having heard the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's turn in the New Testament to the 10th chapter of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Once you get there, let your fingers do the walking all the way down to verse 23. We will read 23, 24, and 25. Hebrews chapter 10, beginning our reading at verse 23. I'm reading this morning out of Pat's favorite version, the King James. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. 
And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Our focus scripture this morning is found in verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. We'd like to talk about for a few minutes this morning, uh, let's go back to church. Um, actually, if you look at the bulletin, it says, let's go to church. That's true too. Um, and as I'm presenting this message this morning, I'm, I'm looking at the fact, good news, some of us are already coming to church. So sounds a little repetitive, but we certainly want to encourage you that have already made a commitment, not just uh, to God um, and Jesus as your personal savior, but you've made a commitment to come to church. But if we be honest this morning, um, some because of the pandemic, some for various other reasons, uh, quite frankly, have stopped going to church. And so on national Back to Church Sunday, I, would, I certainly wanted to remind us uh, to come to church. And if for any reason, and you'll hear some of them as I go through the message this morning, um, and this is not being critical, this is not dogging anybody out, but prayerfully it's a, it's a word of encouragement um, that you may prayerfully consider coming back to church. And then as I close this message this morning, if you've never committed your life to Jesus Christ, you've never asked God to forgive you of your sins, then that's going to be a first step for you and then plugging in uh, to a church on a regular basis. It's so easy to hit the snooze button on Sunday morning when the alarm sounds, roll over and go back to sleep. Maybe you had every intention of going to church even had your clothes laid out Saturday evening, but your sleepy side wins and you satisfy your conscience with the thought, I'll go to church next Sunday. Then again, why even go to church at all? Or why even go back to church? You go to school to get an education so you can make a living. You go to work to make money so you can pay your bills. You go to the gym for exercise so you can have better health. You go to the mall to shop for clothes and to the grocery store to buy food. You go to the lake to get fish, the ball game to cheer, the golf course or the tennis court for fun. But church, why go there? Why get up early on one of your few off days? Why go through the hassle of dressing up, getting the kids ready? Why go through the trouble of finding a parking space near the front and a pew space near the back? Why go to church? That wasn't for you, Daphne. You weren't them front row Baptists, and I understand. If you've ever found yourself wondering about that little question, you're not by yourself. You are certainly not alone. Surveys tell us as many as 79% of Americans identify themselves as Christians, yet only 20% of Americans attend church on a regular basis. I guess some people look at church as a bother, as, a, as an unnecessary burden to be avoided whenever possible. A perfectly good hour wasted in order to keep a wife a preacher or a parent off our backs. Others see it like a sort of uh, punching a spiritual clock or earning brownie points with the Lord. But to some of us who understand what church is and what it's really about, going to church can be one of the most spiritually fulfilling and inspiring things that you will do all week. So with that as an introduction, briefly five reasons why we should go to church or in that if that be the case go back to church and the first thing on that list is membership the church gives us a place to belong and if you think about it if you be honest about it all of us need a place to belong all of us need to be a part of something bigger than ourselves 
all of us need to experience both family and fellowship. Everywhere you look, there are signs that people are hungering for fellowship. They're hungering for a community, a sense of family. Watch those TV commercials. Beer commercials don't just sell beer. They sell fellowship. You see people drinking together. Advertisers don't portray someone drinking alone. It's always in the context of enjoying other people's company because people long to be connected. There are many analogies for a Christian being disconnected from a church, a football player without a team, a soldier without a platoon, a tuba player without an orchestra, a sheep without a flock, but the most understandable and biblical picture is that of a child without a family. That family is the church. God does not want his children growing up in isolation from each other, so he created a spiritual family here on earth for each and every one of us. I would ask you to consider this is September as we get close now to the fall season. When you see geese heading south for the winter, flying along in a V formation, you might be interested in knowing what science has discovered about why geese fly that way. It has been learned that as each bird flaps its wings, it creates uplift for the bird immediately following it. By flying in a V formation, the whole flock adds at least 71% greater flying range than if each bird flew on its own. Christians who share a common direction and a common sense of community can get where they are going quicker and easier because they are traveling on the thrust of one another. Also, when a goose gets sick, or gets wounded and falls out of formation, two other geese follow him to help and to protect him. They stay with him until either he's able to fly or he is dead, and then they launch out to catch up with their group. Jesus gave us the church so that we could do the same thing for one another, support each other, stand by each other when we are down and out. The second reason we need to go to church or go back to church is magnification. In case no one has ever told you this, this thing of church is not all about you. It's really all about Jesus Christ. Church gives us an opportunity to worship God the Father and his son Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I've said this more times than I can count, that worship is far more than what goes on in a brick building for one hour on Sunday mornings. Worship should be a way of life. But the truth is, most people don't worship God uh, by themselves or on their own. And you understand, you, you know why. Life is busy, life is hectic, and we can get easily distracted. Church gives us one hour a week of focused worship and attention on Jesus Christ. I've always liked how David described in Psalms chapter 34, verse 3, and I can hear Kim Hinton repeating this. It's one of her favorite scriptures. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. If you will let yourself truly be immersed in worship, no matter what style of worship service you prefer, you will feel the presence of God in this place and it will stay with you long after the benediction. So the third area I wanted to look at this morning as a reason we should go and or go back to church is maturity. Let me share this for your prayerful consideration. We don't study the Bible so we can sound smart Wednesdays at Bible study. We study the Bible so through it, the Holy Spirit can change us and make us more like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. God wants to develop you and I the type of character that was described in the Beatitudes of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, the fruits of the Spirit in the book of Galatians, and Paul's great love chapter in Corinthians. Here's what the Holy Spirit does. 
He uses a variety of methods to lead us into what I like to call Christ-likeness. He often uses the circumstances of life, trials and even tragedies to shape our character. It's been said that it behooves us to be careful what we worship. For what we are worshiping, we are also becoming. He also, if you pay close attention, he uses other people. Fellowshipping with people who are spiritually more mature than we are, and in the process, it helps us to grow. As I look back on my own uh, church historicity, what I see is, I see parents, I see preachers, I see pastors, I see deacons, I see mothers, I see Sunday school teachers. Mother McKinney, I can still hear your husband uh, teaching on a Sunday morning in the basement of New Hope Baptist Church doing what we commonly call uh, catechizing or summarizing the Sunday school lesson. And here I am 20, 30, 40 years later still using much of what I learned from others that God put in my path. So maturity, it helps us to grow. Another thing God does, he definitely uses prayer. The more time you spend talking to God and not just talking to God, but then getting quiet and letting the spirit of God talk back to you, the more you begin to walk, talk, act, and sound like his son, Jesus Christ. But I still believe the tool he uses most than anything else is God's word. In fact, the Bible calls the word of God the sword of the spirit. As very famous uh, author and pastor Rick Warren, he puts it like this. The spirit of God uses the word of God to make you and I more like the son of God. Man, I think that bears repeating. The spirit of God uses in Sunday school, in Bible study, in our personal prayer time, uses the word of God to make us more like the son of God. When you come to church into the fellowship of other spiritually growing people and hear the word of God being preached, being taught, it teaches you and I what it really means to be like Jesus. It challenges us to follow in his footsteps and hopefully, prayerfully, it inspires you and I and equips us to be able to do it. Church helps us to grow in the arena of spiritual maturity. Fourthly, Going to church, going back to church, prepares you and I for ministry. I want you to think about it this morning. You and I were put on earth to make a contribution. You and I were not just created to consume resources, eat, drink, take up space. God designed us to make a difference in someone else's life. While many best-selling books offer advice on how to get the most out of life, that's not why God made us. We were created to add to life on planet Earth. God wants each of us to give something back. That's why the Bible says, whether you believe it or not, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. The Bible says God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, and you'll find this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, God made us to do good works, which God planned in advance for us to live our lives doing. These good works are your ministry. God has a ministry for everybody. And the best place to discover and start fulfilling your ministry is in the church. Think about it this morning. It is true whether you accept this truth. We all have some gift, some talent, some ability. We all have experiences and interests that God has given us that we can use in ministry. The mistake so many people make, they restrict ministry to preachers and pastors, maybe uh, deacons and other people with titles. But I stand before you this morning to say everybody has an arena of ministry that they can exercise if they choose to do so. Um, if you love to cook, you can make meals for people that are shut in. I see you back there, Joan. I know every week you do meals for wheels. That's not done in the church, but that blesses somebody. So guess what? That's a ministry. If you've got a heart for kids, then you were probably made for the children's ministry. Who better than a recovering alcoholic? 
or a recovering drug addict who fought that demon and found freedom could share that with someone else that's going through a similar or same situation. If you've been through the tragedy of divorce, God can use you to comfort others who are experiencing that same heartbreak. The possibilities are limitless. Unfortunately, so are the excuses. And one of the reasons people don't do ministry, in my personal and humble opinion, is because we don't look for the reasons to do. We look for the excuses and the reasons not to do. Uh, if you've been saved and you're not involved in any service or you're not involved in any arena of ministry, I got a question for you this morning. What excuses are you using? Abraham was old. Jacob was insecure. Leah was unattractive. Gideon was poor. David had a fair and had all kinds of family trouble. Elijah was suicidal. Jeremiah was depressed. Naomi was a widow. The Samaritan woman had not two, three, four, but five failed marriages. Thomas was a doubter and Timothy was timid. Yet, God used each of them in his service. And if you'll let him, He'll use you too. Lastly, finally, the fifth reason we need to go and or go back to church is to carry out the mission that God has given us. When you got the church's mission, excuse me, is the same as Christ's mission. I can hear my brother Cliff saying this in his initial sermon back in 1984 to seek and to save that which was lost. When you get saved, Jesus adds you to his church and therefore his mission now becomes your mission. In church, we all have, think about it, the same mission to share the good news of Jesus and his saving grace with a bent and a broken world. You might fulfill your mission simply by sharing your own personal testimony, the story of how you came to Jesus and now what he has done in your life. You might carry out your mission by telling people the good news, explaining the sacrificial death and the subsequent resurrection of Jesus Christ and what that means to the world. Or maybe you will accomplish your mission by simply inviting someone to church and letting them hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As I prepare to take my seat, I have one more question. Think about the fact, is anyone going to be in heaven because of you? Let that sink in. Is anybody going to be in heaven because of you? Well, anybody in heaven be able to say to you, I want to thank you. I'm here because you cared enough to share the good news of the gospel with me. Imagine the joy of greeting people in heaven whom you had an impact, who you talked to, who you prayed for or prayed with, who you witnessed to and helped them to get there. Has, a, has an eternal significance. The eternal salvation of one single soul is more important than any other thing you will ever achieve in life. I hope that I've given you enough reasons to get up and go to church next Sunday. The truth is, church isn't just something you and I attend, it's something you are. When you understand what it means not just to go to church, but to actually be the church, you discover your life's true purpose. You and I were made to be a member of his family, to magnify his glory, to mature in his image, to be a minister of his mercy and a missionary of his grace. Can we thank God for the word of God this morning as we think prayerfully about why we go to church? Or why, if we've been, uh, how do they say it in the army, AWOL, and now it's time to what? It's now time to come back to church. Those of us that are already in church, praise God from whom all blessings flow. But if you happen to be an individual, again, live in this sanctuary, or listening to us via live stream this morning, and you've never made that commitment of your life to God, um, this would be a great time to do just that. Simply telling God that I'm sorry for my sins, for any wrongdoing I've ever committed. 
And the beauty is God is ready, willing, and able to accept you just as you are. And then once he accepts you, he's forgiven you now for all of your sins. He's literally wiped the slate clean. And don't get depressed because I know some Christians shortly after they uh, accept Christ, they, they think now uh, life is going to be perfect. There's not going to be any problems, not going to be any challenges. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but part of my job, part of my obligation, part of my responsibility is do as they do you in court. Y'all know how when you go to court, you put your hand on the Bible and then you raise this hand. I, t I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. I have to tell you the whole truth. After you accept Christ and even join the church, it doesn't mean that life becomes perfect at that point. What it does now mean, you have an eternal partner. Uh, the Spirit of God will now be with you in every trial, in every tribulation, in every tragedy. He will help you deal with any and every situation and circumstance you may face. After you've accepted Jesus Christ, your next step is very, very simple. Find you a church home. We just talked about it. Find you a church family. And uh, I'm also honest about this. Every church is not for everybody. And that's one of the reasons God gave us options. Gave, God gave us a multiplicity of different fellowships or churches for us to choose from. Now, obviously, I'm a little biased this morning. If you're visiting, if you are considering church membership, we would certainly be remiss if we didn't offer you a personal invitation to be a part of the St. John's East family. Uh, one of the nicest, one of the warmest, one of the friendliest congregations that I've ever been a part of, and I've been in the church for over 60 years. But just in case St. John's may not be your choice, there are other churches all over this city and tri-state. I've said it before, I have personal relationships with numerous preachers and pastors throughout this community. I will be more than happy to connect you, to put you in touch with somewhere where you will feel comfortable being a part of God's family, uh, developing and maturing, identifying what your ministry is and then getting involved in what the mission is that God has called you to do. We talked, Christy, just a moment about the premature passing of Daryl McKellen. Daryl McKellen was active in his church. He didn't just play tennis. He was a deacon in his church. He sung in the men's choir. He was involved in ministry. But see, Daryl didn't know, just like we don't know, how much time we have left. You better get it in while the getting is still good. We thank God for the opportunity to share the word of God this morning. We pray that something that has been said has been uplifting and encouraging to you this morning. Uh, we want to pause now and honor God with our gifts, with our tithes and offering. I see my uh, friend and brother, and he's also our part-time custodian, William Johnson from Henderson, Kentucky, is with us this morning. Welcome, William. Glad to have you with us today. Um, as we prepare to honor God with our gifts, we are reminded every good and perfect gift comes from him. Uh, not just our finances, even though we're grateful for that, uh, but our health, our strength, our family, our friends, our shelter, our transportation, our food, our clothing, that list goes on and on. It all comes from him. So notice how God sets this up. He gives it to us first, and then he steps back and waits to see will we reciprocate and give back to him. As I uh, prepare to pray over these gifts, uh, it's not tax time yet, but y'all do know it is coming. And have y'all noticed how Uncle Sam does not act like God? Uncle Sam does not trust you. He does not trust me. So when you get your paycheck, y'all know what it says, gross. Then what does it say? Deduction, 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 deduction. What is Uncle Sam saying? Brother John, I don't trust you, so I'm going to take mine off the top. Uh huh. But see, notice what God does. God gives us gross blessings, doesn't deduct anything, 
but then steps back and watches what type of steward and what type of manager are we going to be to reciprocate and give back to him. I'm so glad, I'm so enough glad that God is God and he doesn't act like uh, the government uh, or the IRS. I ain't even going to get into that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you for the fact that you give us an opportunity each and every Sunday to come, fellowship, give your name, praise, honor, and glory, uh, interact with like-minded believers, God. We thank you for the institution of your church. The Bible says that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, God, we bring these tangible financial gifts back to you. We ask now in the name of Jesus that you bless, multiply, sanctify these gifts as they go for the ongoing as well as the upbuilding of thy kingdom. And it is in Jesus' name that we ask it all. Amen. remain standing for the benediction. Uh, Joan Stoltz just came up to me and pointed to her watch. She said, John, what happened? Because um, I finished up early today, so I told her it's uh, football season and people want to get home in time for the kickoff at 12 noon. I thought I'd give y'all a break. Uh, got that word in kind of quick and um, we should have a good fellowship. We don't play, Bears don't play to 720, so we're, we're in good shape. Repeat after me, may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from another. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. Everybody have a blessed week.